as well. Go ahead and get uh, get rolling. Uh, I should mention and say welcome to Mojo, who is our uh, fairly new at this point uh, VP of Engineering and uh, is coming to this meeting for the first time. So, uh, Mojo, but you can. It's hey. nice to meet you. Say hi to him. Welcome to Second Life. Awesome. I'm welcome to Lennon Lab. Uh, we would have had a, a much bigger crowd to greet you, but um, at very short notice. You're lucky. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I think uh, I think we'll we'll. Uh have a chance to, to chat with Mojo more uh, after we get through our standard uh, business for this week, but I should talk about what's going on with viewers for a bit. Um, we are, we, we've historically, you know, for a long time had a problem with viewers kind of building up faster than we could get them, uh, you know, finished and, and deployed. We uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we did. Um, yeah, so we're we're trying to to alleviate the problems there, basically by getting more stuff bundled up in each release, um, but trying to do it in such a way that we're not uh, exposing ourselves to too much additional QA risk. So uh, typically, the way that's going to go is that you know we'll start out with an RC viewer that uh, you know still has a, a you know relatively restricted amount of stuff in it. Once that has past muster for some period of time, then we would consider merging multiple RCs and, uh, uh, you know, before actually promoting any of them. And so by the time something gets promoted, it's going to contain, you know, more stuff, but it's been through various levels of, of kind of validation. And uh, in particular, the, this week we put out an RC that combines two of our mate viewer and mate H have now been combined into one. Um, uh, so I, you know, technically we should probably come up with the name of a drink that starts out with GH to uh, to name the viewer after, but I think. Um, so I guess you get two drinks for the price of one. Uh, and uh, so that's out there. If anybody wants to to look at it in RC <laughs> or or gets assigned to it as the case may be. <laughs> uh, I think uh, they should all be named after Lindens. <laughs> No, you know, really, actually, because no Linden will think... want a, a, a mate to go out. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's actually, I kind of like that idea. You get a little bio of each of us. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, and if you don't like it, contact this person. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so, let's see, in, additional, in addition to RC viewers, um, there's... Uh, we've got some project viewers out now that I think we've talked about in previous meetings. Uh, 360 viewer uh, seems to have garnered a fair amount of interest, and and you know we think it's looking pretty good. If you have issues with it, please let us know. Um, uh, otherwise, it's uh, you know likely to proceed down the the pipeline to release in the usual fashion. Um, we also have a project viewer that gives better LODs uh, during hopefully better LEDs during um, a mesh upload using the, the mesh optimizer library. Uh, we have one that's got the, a new performance floater that uh, kind of helps you drill down a bit with what's going on in the scene and also gives you uh, kind of one-stop access to a bunch of the relevant controls, so it's uh, hopefully easier is, to, to tweak things. Is that going out with any of uh, Beck's suggestions? or? Will that be uh, it doesn't incorporate them currently. Um, but what's out there now is just the original uh, design. But we are we are also working on a which ne next topic actually. But we're we're working on a project for uh, uh, kind of evaluating and trying to improve performance in general. Uh, so there's no viewers out for that yet. But uh, you know one of the things we want to look at. There is, uh, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, useful info we've been getting from Beck about. Uh, She's various... very passionate about performance. 
Yeah, yeah, right it's it's great to see people uh, fired up about it. I hope it spreads to the uh, rest of the community. <laughs> yeah, the creators, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, just, just to put out that we are working on performance actively, and if people other than Beck have input about you know things that are. I mean, we're happy to continue hearing from Beck too. But uh, you know, if if, if other folks have uh, input about places that they've run into uh, uh, issues or or things that have been fixed in other viewers that we should be looking into, um, you know, please pass that stuff along to us, and we're happy to roll that into the investigations that we're doing here. Um, yeah, we, and we do we do have a lot of nice detail on on stuff now. Uh, so I think that is it. Um, we wanted to, uh, from here we wanted to transition to a, kind of an open Q&A session if people wanted to talk to, uh, you know, Mojo about, uh, uh, you know, his role or what's going on at the lab, um, then uh, this, is, uh, this is a chance to do that and I will uh, I'll hand it over to him. Also, uh, Mojo, if you have any sort of opening statement or other stuff you want to talk about feel free to to jump in um i am more than happy to do a, a q a I, I want people to know that i'm very new um i'm very excited um but there's there's plenty that i'm exploring and don't know so i'm going to seem like a little bit of a noob uh i do have a, a very long history in, in software and can you know i suppose talk a little bit about my background um but uh, I, I, let's, let's do that for, for maybe two minutes and then I'll, I'll take questions or I'm not sure what else you had on the agenda, uh, Veer, but. Uh, no, you're, uh, you're it. <laughs> I feel a little ambushed here. I didn't realize I was the agenda, but. Um... <laughs> Surprise. Yes. I mean, we, yes. we have, uh, we just tend to have an open Q&A period at the end too, once we're out of official topics. So you're not obligated to, you know, fill up the whole hour or anything. That's good. Um. So, so basically, uh, just to tell people my background, um, I, I basically spent a, a lot of time at Microsoft, kind of at the beginning of my career. Uh, I'm currently the uh, VP of Engineering at at Linden Lab, but the um, my my career journey to get here is interesting. Um, so, I spent time uh, working in Visual Studio and working on languages. I spent time working uh, a lot of time working on uh, the graphics APIs at Microsoft for the DirectX API. So I have a, a graphics background, and then I spent many years uh, working on Xbox on a number of different Xbox technologies and games. Um, I helped found the Forza Motorsport studios, so I'm very interested in, in all things motorsport. Um, and um, you know, spent time working on. Uh, Fable 2, spent time working on Crackdown, Halo, you know, a lot of, of the other big uh, tentpole franchises that uh, Microsoft put together. But after 16 years at Microsoft, I ended up uh, leaving to actually uh, follow one of our CTOs at Xbox to a company called IGT. And they uh, basically are a very large gambling manufacturer. So they make slot machines for across the world. And so I spent time kind of uh, seeing <laughs> seeing that side of of, um, of software. It was interesting. It was highly regulated. Um, uh, fly around the world and and meet with a lot of different casino customers and built a whole new platform for for them. Uh, also spent time at a company called Double Down doing mobile work and uh, uh, basically Double Down Casino and uh, Double Down. Fort Knox. I felt I felt the need to do something good for the world, and then I decided to work for a company called Level X, and they actually make um, surgery simulators, if you will, for actual doctors. And uh, um, so that was a really interesting uh, gig for a while. But um, I ended up here. Uh, my love of virtual worlds and and um, open space and and these kind of problems kind of led me to Linden Lab, and so far I've been loving it. So um, it's really nice to have you. Um, the the part about working with um, rendering kind of caught my uh, 
interest because yeah. uh, render pipeline has forever been a bit of a uh, what should I call it in Second Life um, challenge. <laughs> an adventure, <laughs> a journey. <laughs> it, is, it is a journey of suffering. <laughs> yeah. Is that something you're going to be looking into, Mojo? Well, I, uh, as Veer knows well, I have a strong interest in it. Um, uh, so we it needs have love. been having a lot of discussions about, uh, for instance, performance, as was mentioned. Uh, you know, how do we yeah. improve? Uh, performance how do we you know definitely features in that space so i guess the short answer is yes yes i will be involved in that uh but it's uh um mo you know both out of you know at, at a high level we have an interest in making sure um we're delivering you know good features and and part of that is you know things that involve the rendering pipeline so um I don't want to pre-announce features, so I don't want to talk too much about that. No, of course. We definitely have some good stuff in store. But, uh, I mean, Second Life is, you know, a fantastic platform. And um, uh, there's, uh, like with everything, there's a lot of room for improvements. And, and I think uh, most residents in Second Life would like to see improvements to existing things. Uh, simply because, yeah, it, it, these are struggles that have been around for many 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 years and um there's been uh you know some sentiment among um you know linda lab working towards uh brand new big shiny things and um in, in a lot of ways they fall flat on the users ears because the users are like well why you know we didn't want this we want this fixed instead of this new thing and uh so we would uh, I, I'd like to say I could speak for everyone in SL, obviously I can't, but um, fixes, improvements uh, will make the biggest difference for the user base, in my opinion. Thank you for that feedback. Yeah, uh, I, I think um, I think you've, you have many voices inside of Linden Lab that uh, echo your sentiments, and, and we've definitely been looking at that and how we can, uh, I think the term we're using is delight our user base. Uh, yeah, Naren has a good point there. <laughs> I mean, there's a long history of that. Um, obviously, you know, we love innovation. Um, and, uh, but uh, it, it just seems quite often, you know, things get delivered um, I don't want to say half finished, but they're finished, perhaps, but not polished. And uh, so uh, it's it's nice to have you. I, I don't want to bombard you with, uh, you know, this right off the bat. But um, uh, residents really want, <laughs> uh, you know, improve polishing. We'll say. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, don't don't be ashamed of that. I think I, I think we all want uh, an amazing product that works well and and is something where we want to post about and, and and talk about. And it's frustrating when it's not living up to our expectations. Does anybody have other questions, or do we want to go to other business? Uh, still some typing going on here. Not not all of us are in voice, so oh, uh, these meetings I are tricky. You got to keep an eye on text chat. I will take a quick look. Uh, Flossy definitely. And thank you for the reminder of that. Someone's mentioning HDR lighting. Um, yeah, that's what I did in the past. I, was, I don't know months how to afford them. How did it go? <laughs> Uh, I mostly did it because since I can't have lights that exceed uh, intensity of one, but specular can still exceed an intensity of one, it clips, mm. and it was 
starting to irritate me, so HDR lighting. Cool, yeah. Well, we've definitely have been having some discussions on different lighting models. Um, I think, you know, the, the concern that I've definitely been um, getting ingrained into me is that as we add, you know, and expand features, we got to make sure that all the existing ones work well. And, yes, um, that. And so <laughs> there's always this fear of, you know, changing the model in some way and then making, you know, one thing great and everyone else's experience. As uh, third-party viewer developers, um, and we have multiple viewers here represented. Uh, I see Catsnip is here, and uh, Alchemy, and um, Black Dragon. Uh, who else is here? Um, anyway, it, it tends to be, um, obviously, we adopt your features and your changes and innovations. And um, uh, unfortunately, I'll speak for Firestorm anyway. Firestorm has a, a rather significant live support presence in Second Life. And um, so we get the, we probably get the feedback um, more about your features than uh, than you may get. Um, and so it, it, it makes us as third party viewer developers blatantly aware of um, shortcomings. And, um, you know, there was a time, um, and, and even today, I mean, having this meeting represents that, uh, there was a time where we had a, a lot of cooperation between third-party viewers and Linen Lab through Oz, and um, we'd like to get, you know, back to that stage where um, we, we want Linen Lab to realize that you can use us as soundboards when you're thinking of things. Put us under a NDA or or you know, whatever needs be. Um, but because of our connection with the user base and because we are users ourselves, we, we live and breathe and sleep Second Life, um, our feedback is, is usually pretty accurately representing uh, the rest of the community. It, it is amazing, you know, all the different um, work that's gone on kind of in, in the first community, uh, I have to admit, it's it's somewhat uh, new to me, I've, and so, um, I you know, I welcome hearing that because uh, I mean, what could the potential be here? I mean, we effectively have a a lot of interested parties that want to do great things for Second Life, and how do we harness that and and right and, and build you know even more magnificent experiences? So. And, and the thing with us with third party viewers is we're not. Uh, Linen Lab and, and third party viewers sort of have a different um, agenda. Linen Lab is a business needs to make money. Um, third party viewers, we just want to please our users. Uh, that's why we do what we do. We don't get paid. And um, so you get more or less unbiased opinions from us. Yeah. Well, one thing I, I need to double back with uh, Grumpity and the rest of the offices of Second Life is trying to understand... Kind of what are the different tiers of um, involvement and disclosure that we have? Like, I, I really want to tell you about a bunch of things, but I, um, um, you know, I think uh, I need to kind of understand what the rules are, so to speak. Um, and that's and there's uh, there's a lot to get used to. Yeah. <laughs> this meeting yeah. is recorded in public, Mojo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. <laughs> well, this is why I'm being cagey, I guess. Is uh, it's you know, it's not because I don't want to. Um, ideate with all of you and, and talk about a wonderful future together i just you know i want to say hey i'm here and uh, i want to listen to uh, the community and take input and this seems to be a great forum to do it. it it really is yes and as always if you guys have ideas uh thoughts you can reach out directly to me Oh, be careful where you go with that. So I just recently did um, a poll. So it, Mojo, in case you're not aware, Firestorm, we've got about around about 80 people on the team. It's a very large team. Um, wow. Yeah. And um, we, uh, so we've got our, obviously our developers, we've got our QA, um, we've got our support, which is a huge uh, department. We've got our onboarding of new users through our community gateway that we work with in the lab with. Um, and <laughs> I opened a can of worms the other day and uh, just uh, asked about um, what kind of improvements would, or, or do we hear from our users that they would like to see 
and uh, it's it's uh i, I it's put everything growing. it's still growing i put it into a word doc um in 11 point font and it's five pages long at the moment I'll, oh my send, god send it over to me you know i you i know. will send it i still have well, to structure it a little bit this, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um there's some like there's some low-hanging fruit in here that would make a huge impact um and uh, a, a large majority of it is actually you know improvements fixes um and uh i swear to god the user base will love you more if you spend a year instead of uh coming up with new things spend a year just fixing this amazing platform that we already have make it better uh, some amazing suggestions here i, I gotta i'll structure it alexa um I like the, to, there's you know, oh it's it it's pretty mumbo jumbo at the moment but yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, I look forward to looking through that and um I mean I you know, one thing I'll tell you off the bat is, you know, having come in, I've definitely have you know, I mentioned an interest in performance and that's one area where you guys have already done some amazing work in, in your own viewers, right? If we're looking at the extended viewers. Um each of you might have different focus on that, but like I'm I want to mine the ideas that you've already implemented in your viewers and say, oh, why aren't we doing this? You know, so we uh, obviously we actually encourage Linen Lab to take anything that we have. So, but a, a lot of the suggestions are in areas of, so for example, estate management tools, improvements to estate management tools. So some really mm -hmm. good suggestions here. Um, group management seen... tools. So we've seen a couple of the estate management ones uh, come through lately um, through our feature requests that we're looking at. Um, groups, uh, and I'm kind of starting to work on a potential group project that I'm trying to put together. Uh, so yeah, when if you can give me that list. Um, I have a whole category of suggestions for groups and, okay. and some really useful stuff. Like for example, uh, okay, SO users deal with spammers. It, it's a daily thing. Right. And, and generally speaking, they target your business or, you know, in the case of Firestorm, we have, uh, we do support in nine different languages. It may be more than that now, Anna, is it more than that? Anyway, the last time I checked, we supported Firestorm in nine different languages, and we'll have spammers join all nine of those groups, plus our other groups, and then start spamming in all of those groups. It would be a really useful thing if uh, we had a, a way of muting and then banning that resident from all the groups at once, as opposed to uh, having to go to each individual group. And and let's not just mention the, the thing that you know if you eject a user who's spamming your group before you mute him, he's still able to type in your group. Right. Like this is old. This is like, how can this still be uh, not fixed? So it, it's little things like that. Those are good observations. So yeah, I, I just killed the conversation. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I, I had something to say and like my thought just floated off into the ether. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Well, <laughs> it'll come it, to you it after the meeting. about avatars. Avatars, okay. Oh yeah, okay. So a common complaint I get from my users is a lack of tools to basically limit the impact of avatars on their frame rate. Mm -hmm. Like... I was at a sim yesterday and just exploring some complaints from region. users. Region. Region, same thing. Um, I get it either way. Some people were having the frame rate dragged down so heavily by users with over two gigabytes of textures on their avatar, and their complexity oh was still below 60,000. I mean, the, yeah, this is a, a long-standing topic in that we know that our 
our complexity calculations are pretty busted and also that we need better tools for complexity management. I definitely want to also comment that, you know, uh, the problem that you're talking about, which is just avatar... Um, uh, Generally unbounded avatar, avatar complexity. Uh, say that again? Uh, it, generally, it's the problem of unbounded, unlimited complexity of avatars. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, what if... Um, I mean, I'd like it so that people that have... I don't want to call them crappy avatars, but just very, very um, enhanced avatars that don't work on most people's systems, that you can have a low-end uh, user and have someone that, you know, comes into a sim that has um, that amount of complexity and that it, you know, we we can respond in a way where it, it doesn't drag down your frame rate. At the very least, it's recognized that that avatar is, is going to drag everyone's system down and, and some other action taken where um, whether it's an imposter or some other uh, way of dealing with that. You know, why, why does people have to, in, in my mind, why do people have to specially tune their settings to deal with people or have tools to to um, to get rid of them? I think by default, uh, it'd be nice if the viewers would just kind of deal with that inherently based off of you know the environment that the user is set up on. So. Did you just um, commit to your first project? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Oh dear. <laughs> That's worth a try. So, um, but you know, I I I I did com uh, not commit to, but I did uh, show sympathy and concern, and that we're spending energy in talking about this, and and that uh, you know, as I stated in the beginning, performance is a big uh, area that I'm I'm thinking about at the moment. Amethyst, what did you write? Mm, yeah, so I think you're pointing out that the complexity value is is broken and, and you guys rely on that for so much. So, uh, Veer, I don't know. Do we have any other statements on that other than... You know, uh, it's, it's a long-running topic. Um... The, these guys have been listening to me babble about it for years, um, but yeah, it's it's our, our rendering cost is super busted. The performance floater is intended as kind of the next step in a long running project to try to improve it. Um, you know, we've also gotten a lot of good input from Beck about per uh, kind of per item rendering times and uh you know that's that's data that we could potentially use to help guide an update to the rendering cost calculation um and uh, also just kind of gives you an alternate channel as a way of kind of expanding the complexity of stuff that's in the scene um and uh yeah we're you know this is something we're we're definitely trying to fix and we're happy with the current state of it and yeah, if you if you point to complex models that have have low complexity values, then the you know percent that those are evidence that our current our current formula is uh, is uh, severely deficient. I mean, has the community proposed alternative um, measurements or uh, for dealing with you know this problem? Uh, Beck has been, Beck is um, one of the Firestorm developers. She's presented some things. Uh, she's ongoing with with Veer and them right now. Okay. Uh, she's very good and she's very passionate about this specifically right now. I could tell stories, <laughs> or we can. I, I don't really know the format of this meeting. I just kind of showed up. So um, well, this, so usually. Uh, wait, wait, wait! Can I can I answer this yeah. one thing in yeah. chat? Buttercup, watch this space on like Monday. 
Uh, my, oh, my, oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Um, so, mean, fingers uh, crossed. <laughs> the the uh, format of these meetings have sort of morphed over the years. Um, and uh, it used to be Oz that would run these meetings. And, um, you know, Linden Lab would do their rundown on what they're working on. The third party viewers would um, do a little rundown on what they're working on. Um, uh, and I, I suppose to that, I should say that um, that big mate that you guys just dropped. Um, we're going to try to get started on a QA cycle on that um, awesome and thing. try to get a release out um, before 2024, somewhere around there. Uh. And we do have a quick <laughs> fix. We do have a quick fix that we're looking at for that, Jess. Um, the push to talk is a little bit funky with middle mouse button on Max. So okay. we're, give, us, give us a little bit of time. Um, PE product engine is taking a look at it right now. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I'll give you a heads up when we get a fix. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we can still um, we can start our QA. Well, and, I'm uh, definitely excited to have some continued conversations with uh, with you all, and I'm sure uh, maybe through Alexa or others, I'll I'll get some other introductions and uh, review some of the suggestions you guys have. Um, but I, I appreciate the welcome and. Uh, it's great to have you. Um, I, I highly encourage you to create a resident alt and live Second Life for a while. The best way you're ever going to understand Second Life, understand your users, the user base, um, is to interact as a resident. I, I've been saying this since day one, and I've been in SL since way too long. Um, I feel like all Indians should, as part of their training, spend two weeks just as a resident, not not as a Linden. Even before they get a Linden account, just live in Second Life. Go to a club, watch a live performance, um, uh, interact, go go shopping, try to figure out how to wear bloody mesh. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a, that was quite an experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. get to know, and and by doing so, you start to understand you know, the frustrations of your user base, of your customer. Uh, the best way to, um, you know, keep a happy customer base is to understand them from their perspective, from their struggle. And there's a lot of struggles in Second Life. Yeah, no, I, gosh, the whole, um, I mean, you bring up dressing yourself, and that's definitely a topic uh, that yeah. I, I've been thinking about as well. Um, and that's, of course, I mean, it's difficult for us who have been in SL for, 15 years uh imagine the new resident coming in it, it's really intimidating you know it's it's really yeah. complicated yeah no it is it um i mean i think that's it well I, i'd be interested in hearing you know about how you guys think about that problem and particularly for new residents and you know how easy or difficult it is to guide new residents that come to your viewers and and get them sorted and i mean if you've got ideas or, or things in your documents around that that'd be interesting as well it's uh it's something i want to kick around yeah absolutely and uh, the all important um uh, i see people have already been mentioning it in chat oh bear, uh, i need to make a bear i'm so sorry oh you haven't made a bear oh come on <laughs> I, now I, come I, on I, we'll, we'll um i'll, I'll take you had all this time i know i know i know i didn't make a bear and i you know uh What's that and that goes. That's a tradition that goes back uh, a long time, as a way of there's a I, I believe there's a reason for it, which is just that uh, so Linens can learn to use the tools that you're going to be developing. Yes. You know I I, I definitely um, uh, love building, love exploring, um, and so a terrible shape. <laughs> Um, and just Mojo has been. We've been doing time in world and exploring and oh, excellent. Q and A and everything. Uh, so and he has done, you know, creating a resident and telling me his experience. Excellent. That's really, yeah. really important. I definitely have opinions, but they're they're still noob opinions. And so Of course. Uh, but yeah. remember them. Remember the opinions you have now. Because they you know, as you learn more, uh, you'll sort of forget 
how hard it was at the beginning. So just try to remember how hard things were, <laughs> so that when you when it comes time that you're you're gonna make changes, you'll s still have that memory of of how that's gonna affect um, you know the average resident. Yeah, that's a really good point. And once you learn the the hairy UI, then you changes, stop thinking yeah. of it as hairy UI anymore, and and you're not yeah. as invested in well, gee, maybe we should make this simpler. And then you hate everyone who wants to change the UI. <laughs> yeah, that's the way you know it. Yeah. That's kind of the 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 crux of the problem here. I mean, um, we'd love to do change, but change, you know, people you will find yeah. You will find in Second Life, and that's why, again, why I say rather than uh, focusing on, uh, you know, brand new shiny feature stuff, um, improve the stuff that we already all struggle with, and, and you're going to make people happy. However, there's a caveat to that. Um, expect that you will never <laughs> make everybody happy, obviously, <laughs> especially in Second Life. Oz had a saying, uh, which was that if there was no drama, uh, there would be no second life, and, and perhaps there is some truth to that. But ultimately, you know, people don't like to to learn new things, and second life is already complicated. Um, but if you give them better tools for doing the things that they already need to do and struggle with doing, uh, you're going to make best friends. It's a good. It's a good message. And uh, yeah, welcome to uh, Second Life. <laughs> Thank you. you know, Thank you. something I've found with users and screaming about UI changes, they're more forgiving when there's a trade-off, basically. Yeah. If it's something they really I get, want. I get a lot of users from Firestorm who left, right, and center scream to make my UI like Firestorm, but then just be grudgingly get used to it because uh, performance on their system is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I think, uh, I, I think we have to think very carefully about, you know, what we change and how we change it and for what audience. Um, but, Understand uh, how your users use what you're changing before you change it. Yeah, because I mean, you all many many users have muscle memory of exactly how to do things. And yeah, that's right. Interrupt, it's going to be um, it's a problem. Um, but you know, I I am interested personally in understanding, you know, what it is about uh, bringing new users to the platform uh, that, um, you know, how how can we help them too? And their needs might be different than, you know, my needs as a new user are different than your needs right now as existing users. And so I don't, I, I'm, I'm wondering how we serve both um, sets of users well. I mean, that's a, that's always a challenge. We ran into that with changing, you know, uh, push to talk. The reason we changed it uh, was valid for new users uh, that don't know that once they press to speak, they're walking around everywhere, broadcasting everything in their household to everyone on a region. Um, and uh, we've changed it. And you know, immediately a bunch of Lindens are like, whoa, this doesn't work anymore. And we have to explain <laughs> that you can, you know, you, you can change in your preferences and everything. But it is very valid. You get used to certain behavior paths and uh, it's a little jarring when things change. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we're going to get the feedback either way. <laughs> so, so. Uh, we're very good at feedback. Um, I, I've been, I've been known as a bit of a, um, uh, advocate. Um, Oz and I had a, a very interesting relationship of, of give and take and, and um, praise and, and hell uh, back and forth. And, um, what, you know, I, I, if Oz went in a direction that I, I felt, you know, this is just not the right thing, I, I was very open about that. Uh, but at the same time, um, we were able to be very professional with each other and still friends at the end of the day. And, uh, I hope that uh, we can uh, be like that with you as well. Be open, but not, you know, don't hate me. 
Oh, well, right now, I, I hate no one. If anything, I, I, I want to spread the love because you guys have basically uh, supported and, and maintained uh, so much of the community for so long that uh, I think you know, you're an integral part of our success. And so I definitely want to make sure that you all are happy with uh, what we're doing and um, support you all as best I can. It's it's important here. It's important that Linden Lab does not lose track of. If third party viewers succeed, Linden Lab succeeds. If third party viewers, if we can keep um, our users, who are actually your users, um, engaged and in Second Life and loving Second Life, um, then everybody wins, including, you know, obviously the users. And absolutely. Um, so, so when I advocate about something, uh, you know, I, I may pick something up and say, okay, I'm sticking my, I'm putting my foot down now. I, you know, I, this needs to be addressed. Um, it, it's not because I personally use it. Most of the time, it's nothing that I use at all. But it's because I, I hear the feedback, and the community wants it, and so I end up taking it upon myself to, sort of, apply the, apply a little bit of pressure to the gears, and, and uh, ultimately. Um, you know, the end user wins. We all win. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, one thing uh, I'd love to, like you mentioned, hey, use this as a sounding board. And I think that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, I want to kind of learn the rules of engagement to kind of go and do that. Uh, so maybe in the future, you know, I'll be more involved in the agenda setting and, and see what we can talk about. I mean, it is a public meeting, and so we don't want to make public statements about things that we then take back. But um, of course. maybe there's other forums that we can kind of test different things out with the community and, and, and see what you guys think. And uh, can can should we expect to see you at these um, third part of your meetings more often? Yeah, I definitely want to come in and and drop in and and kind of hear what the discourse is. If um, uh, if we have um, certainly for presenting news, uh, I'd like to be part of it. I will attend as often as I can. But I that'd think, be wonderful. You know, one thing I, I'll tell you is that without me, I think Grumpity, Veer, all, all, all the rest have uh, you know, been doing a great job without me. So I don't feel like I'm essential here. It's just uh, I want to be involved for the sake of knowing what's going on and, and forming relationships with all of you. If you're making plans um, for future you know, projects, uh, innovations, features, changes, improvements, um, it's been my experience that the best way to go about that is to um, uh, what's the word? Uh, hear 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 the community, get a feel from the community, and although obviously you you can't get to know every resident in Second Life, the third party viewers just represented here right now today, and there's there's quite a few other viewers out there. Um, we we are with the community, we hear the community, and and. So I would just say, uh, trust that you can bounce things off of us and, and get honest uh, and sincere answers to how we feel the user base would react to those things. Utilize us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things... Um... I, I look forward to building a relationship with each of you, and um, this is just an introduction. And I think as as we develop more discussions, uh, you know, we'll have many different channels of feedback and many different ways of of getting that feedback from you all. So I'm excited, absolutely excited, to be able to leverage all the great work that you've done and all the knowledge you've built about our users. Yeah, we, I think we all know that. <laughs> we understand that. 
I, I I keep saying the same thing because I just don't have too much to say. I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, that's fine. Anyway, thank you for uh, for coming and uh, introducing yourself. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you. Got a few minutes left. If there are any other topics we want to uh, cover, questions people have. Uh, you know, we we also got uh, a little bit of an update on uh, uh, on on the, at least one upcoming viewer. Does anybody else want to comment on what they're currently working on or planning? Poser, yeah, that is a good question. We've got, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of interest in, you know, various approaches to controlling uh, avatar positioning, um, and we should uh, uh, we should talk about that. I'm not sure what you mean by uh, per bone sync. You mean just just sending the information from you know your your own pose out to out to other clients that way. I think that's what Niran means. He wants to be able to propagate local animation to other clients. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one one mechanism we talked about there was to just create a uh, kind of a single frame animation, and because I mean that's what we currently have that we can send out, right? The, the advantage with an animation is that it's already a supported uh, type of asset. But there, yeah, there could be other ways to to approach it too. I can just add that, you know, uh, as, as far as something like this uh, and puppeteering and other kinds of ideas in this category, that we're definitely talking about this internally already, and so it's um, it's being discussed. Um, if that's of any interest, just letting people know that. It's something that we're we're thinking about. Oh, it, are there any updates on uh, HTTP two? Uh, I, I'm not sure I got that. Did you say HTTP two? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, not really. It's it's definitely in our backlog, but uh, we don't have any uh, kind of recent updates on it. Uh, 
there's some weird behavior around the max frame rate, uh, frame rate limiter if you try disabling that. NVIDIA GPU? NVIDIA GPU. Uh, that's their OpenGL command thread stalling internally uh, when it gets a synchronous call made. Uh, certain things in the texture system. There's like one GL git call that I remember stalls the NVIDIA driver's internal command thread. You could also be missing a flush call somewhere. And it's queuing up too much at once. All right. Well, we're about out of time for this week, but thanks everybody for coming. Uh, glad uh, glad Mojo could come by and and talk to us as well. And hope everybody has a good weekend. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks yeah. all. As always, if you have questions, need anything, you know where to find me. Yeah. Everybody, just bother Alexa with everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be ecstatic with how much else she's able to get done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming today. Thanks, Niren. Thanks, Bear. Kitty. Mojo Bear. Mojo Bear. Thank you. And you're not allowed to have the help on, on how to make it. Oh, no, 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 no. We have, we have Build-A-Bear workshops. Do you really? Yeah, yeah, I, I helped. I helped Oz build his bear. Well, script his we'll bear. See exactly. And, and exactly. Then, <laughs> yeah, and, and then after so I was like, very I shouldn't have. Is my concern. <laughs> it won't be befitting. Good. But okay. I mean, <laughs> Oz's bear is right here on the ground. So. Oh, it is. Near, oh yeah, it is. Yes. Dear, did that? you do it? Did you the do your own that it does... Oh, he changed it. Uh, take a look at Oz's bear. So, so Oz didn't know how to animate. 
uh, the bear. And so I taught him how to do, um, oh my gosh, I don't even remember the LSL now for it. But anyway, I think he changed it since I showed him. Set prim parameters fast or something like that. I used to have the little kit that taught me how to do that. It was so much fun. Oh, it's great. I made my own kit, my own little tool for for that. And and then I showed, I I mean, I, I sat down with Oz for like four hours showing him how to use the tool that I had made to get the uh, parameters and everything. And then, and then I think he got all smarty pants and improved it himself. That's the one. Thank you, Niran. It's been a while. I haven't been scripting in a long while. Just taking a quick look. All right. I had no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can tell you residents will love your bear no matter how ugly it is. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> oh my god. My first ones are so ugly. Oh, they're so bad. They will oh. also give you shit about the land impact. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, so it make it efficient, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I will take off, but pleased to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'm off. Thank you. Bye, Jess. Bye, all. Bye. Bye, Bye. Inara. Thank Bye. you. Um, Bye, Sovereign. I something I wanted to ask. Oh, I go for it. Uh, is there... Is it still like a hard no on getting LSL functions for like changing light projector textures? You know what? File. Yeah. Little... <laughs> I'm not sure how to interpret Neuron's response. Uh, Neuron doesn't a, a want just as love. Noise. A, a frustrated noise of. Oh changing light projector textures so we don't have to make like 50 prims and then cycle through them to change light textures. Because not being able to change light textures just results in workarounds that are far more horrendous. You know, if all this fails, file a feature request and we can look at it with the whole team. Okay, I will task somebody with that. Yeah, that, that's what I was talking about. Projectors basically don't have LSL functions because a really long time ago, somebody said it would have too much of a potential frame rate impact. And I'm like, it's no worse than cycling through every other texture. Eh. I'm sorry, it seems Alexa can't hear you because there's like this enormous tail over her ears. Ah, uh, yes. I, I know that problem well. So many furries sit on my head. <laughs> la la la! I have to work this weekend on my furry avatar. I have not built from scratch bomb furry avatar before and I am so excited. Niran, I still maintain my expert jumping skills. 